Well, thank you very much, and welcome once again to Where Are They Now? We're going to put aside some of this uh, uh, football talk that you've been hearing for the last seven hours. We'll get into baseball here with somebody who is a main contributor of this show, a good friend of mine, has been since he's been here at Oklahoma State, former standout at OSU, and a member, a member of the Oklahoma State Cowboy Baseball Hall of Fame, Jordy Mercer, who now plays about every position that the Washington Nationals want him to play. Is that pretty much it? That was such a tough question. He he didn't answer. Is it? Are you there? Are you there, Jordo? Uh, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, we barely. I mean, I, that was such a great question. I'll have to repeat it again. That you didn't hear it. Are you still there? I'm here. I'm here. Okay. All right. Here we go. We're gonna make make it like we never never came on yet. We're just gonna we're gonna do it over again. Hey, I was just bagging on you a little bit. The Nationals ask you to play about every position. You're happy to do so. But you've been around the entire infield and even in the outfield this year. Well, you know what? That's what happens when you get a little bit older in this game. You don't move as well as you used to. Um, so you have to expand, broaden your horizons. you got to expand your portfolio a little bit and uh, <laughs> play some positions that you're not familiar with. But you know what? I always say that if you can play shortstop, you can play anywhere in the infield. Um, that's first and foremost. And then uh, after that, you know, whatever happens after that, late in the game, you don't ever know what's going to happen in the National League game. So uh, we've had a five-minute infield. We've, we've had a we, – yeah, we, we name it this year. We, we played it. So it's been a lot of fun. Take me back to how this all came about uh, and you ended up uh, in the nation's capital with the, with the Nationals. Uh, you're in your 10th, 11th year, somewhere in there uh, in terms of major league uh, experience. But – you know, you, you, you didn't go back to the Yankees. Long story short, what happened after that? Well, you become a free agent year by year. Um, as you get older, like I said, unless you sign a long-term deal, which not many people are fortunate to do, um, you know, so you have to you have to find the right fit. And so when you go the course of the offseason, um, you're constantly contacting teams, trying to figure out what their plan is, um, what they're trying to do, things like that. Do they need a, a, an older veteran infielder? to, um, you know, help them give guys days off, things like that. That's uh, pretty cost efficient and things like that. So throughout the course of the process is you have to call teams, uh, kind of put in, you know, a word and see where they're at and then kind of kind of go from there. And Washington had interest from the get-go. Um, they're an old veteran team. Um, they've been around. Uh, guys on that team have been around for a long time. It's a really good group, group of guys, too. I mean, really fortunate to – I wasn't familiar with them. I played against them a ton uh, back in the Pittsburgh days. Um, but I, you know, a lot of guys are still there. And then they've added a bunch of pieces from the Cubs, um, former Pirates, my teammates that they've added, and a few other guys that's been around that I've, I've known and I've played against. Um, so it was just a great fit, it seemed like. And um, they told me I had a really good chance to make the club at a spring training. They needed a utility veteran infielder. Um, and I kind of fit that mold. So um, we thought it was a good fit. And signed with them with the spring training. Um, played all kinds of positions in spring. Um, just bounced around. It was kind of like, you know, playing with your hair on fire pretty much. Cause, you know, a lot of the stuff is new to you. Yeah, I played a little bit second. I played a little bit of third. First base is new. Um, but I was playing all those positions nonstop. So it was good to get in there and, and show them kind of what I can do. And um, it worked out. I made the team. And here we are. We're at the break. And. You know, we haven't – we play well. We've had a lot of injuries here as of late, um, but we're still right in it. And that, that's the that's the most important thing is you're not out of the race yet. So um, we still got uh, – I think we're only five or six games back. But um, anything can happen this second half. Yeah, the good news is you're still in it, and the bad news is, for me, you're still in it. Yeah, you're, you're back <laughs> six games back of the Mets. A nine in the, in the wild card race. So there's, you know, 70-some-odd games still to play. So that, that division, like a lot of them, were still up for grabs. I want to go back to, I think you and I talked before you went to spring training. Uh, now, nothing's for sure, and, and to have you say, well, I had to earn a spot. I mean, it's almost hard to believe a guy, a veteran like yourself in the major leagues would have to do that. But what were you, I don't know, almost confident that you would? Or until you heard you did, you weren't sure? Well, first and foremost, you got to be confident. I mean, I think that's the big, biggest thing is you got to be confident going in, knowing that you got a chance to make this team. 
knowing that uh, your track record speaks for itself. You played so many, so many, many amount of years, you know, in, in the top level in the big leagues. Uh, you played different positions before in the big leagues. Yeah, you're not familiar with them, but you played them before. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're willing to bounce around. You're willing to do whatever it takes, you know, for the team. And I think that's one of the biggest things, too. And then also, like you said, I mean, you're still – nothing set in stone so they actually tell you hey you made the team so you, you never know how that exactly works with ownership now and, and things how what direction they want to go um whether they have a young kid that they want to get on the team at the at the at the time um you still know you don't know what exactly how it's going to unfold until they actually tell you hey you made the team so um but yeah you gotta have confidence for sure knowing that you're going in a good situation um, that's the reason why you signed there uh, first and foremost they wanted you to sign there and then uh, coming in and, and playing well and, and having that confidence, knowing that you're going to make the team. And finally, when you get the word, you do. And you just kind of keep going keep on going about your business and, and trying to win some games. You know, I followed you in spring training. You had a good spring training. The numbers said you did. Uh, and you got off to a good start in the regular season with the Nats. Tell me what it's like. You, you kind of just painted the dressing room uh, uh, atmosphere, if you will, with these players. But what's it like? Playing in the in the in the nation's capital, uh, different different group of fans, different expectations. What is it? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely expectations. I mean, coming off a 19 World Series that they won, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. you're always going to have that expectation hanging over you. Um, a lot of the same guys are still there. A lot of the young superstars are still there. Soto, uh, a lot of the young uh, Trey Turner, a lot of the guys that really got a chance to be really really good in this game for a long time um, are, are there. Strasburg, he's been hurt, but he's still, you know, he's still one of their key key factors. And then obviously Max Scherzer started the All Star game last night, so um, you got guys that have been there, done it, have played well, and then you also got guys that are young, you know, upcoming, you know, legit superstars. So it's cool to be a part of that. I knew what I was going into. I knew um, the role that I was going in to take. I wasn't going to play much. Um, I knew that going in. I was going to spell guys off days. I was going to spot start here and there. I was going to come in and in the National League, lay double switches, pinch hits, things like that that the National League offers, and that's kind of where I wanted to go, um, you know, from the off season because National League, you know, there's so many more moving parts in the National League than in the American League, mm-hmm. you know, with the DH and non-DH. So um, it helps me out, my situation out. So that's where I wanted to go. And then, uh, like I said earlier, just the guys, you know, the, the Ryan Zimmerman's been there for 15, 16 years. Like I said, Max and the guys that have played it, have done it. John Lester came from the Cubs. Schwarbers came from the Cubs. Guys that have played in playoff games. Guys that have went and won World Series. I mean, it's really cool to be a part of a you know an older veteran group. But yet, like I said, some of the younger guys that are coming up. So we have that good mix and match of older and veteran guys that have uh, that played together, and it's it's a, it's fun to be a part of. Yeah, I would think adapting to uh, this, and and I'm not disparaging Pittsburgh, but it seemed like during your time there at Pittsburgh, you were always kind of running uphill, uh, trying to get into that last playoff spot, getting in there, not getting, not winning it. Uh, But this group here, you you just you just laid it out perfectly. They they've been there, and they got a lot of veterans. So that that had to make you feel. Uh, even more uh, a part of something special because I guarantee the people there expect you to win it again this year, even though you're six back. <laughs> Absolutely. And the good thing about it is, is you know, this whole coaching staff and the players are, are calm. You know, they've been, they, I think they were 19 and 36 or 19 and 38 uh, yeah. in 19 when they won the world mm-hmm. series. So, mm-hmm. you know, when you're that far back, you know, that, you know, and you still have that confidence, um, you still have that belief that anything can happen. Well, that's a good thing. And so, the, the coaching staff and the players, they have this sense of calmness about them, like, hey, even though we're five, six games back, I mean, you could turn this thing around in a week. All it takes is a good week, and, and you're back right in it. And we played well. You know, we didn't have a good stretch, you know, the last week or so before the All-Star break because mm-hmm. we, had, we had a lot of injuries. But um, the two weeks pre- previous before that, we played some of the best baseball probably of all, you know, all of baseball. We got ourselves right back in it. I think we were only down two or three games back at one point. So, and you, like I said, it takes a good week of baseball to play well, and you're and you're back in it. So there's just a sense of calmness about this this group and the coaching staff, and knowing that they've done it before. And you know, all it takes is, like I said, a good week to play ball, and then you're right back in it. You went on the IL prior to the break. How are you now? I'm good. It's just a previous injury in 19 when I tore my quad with Detroit. 
Um, I just felt something when I, when I was running from first to third in the late inning game. Um, I think it was a little, little bit more fatigued than anything probably. And I just want to be precautious about it. You know, when, when something's already injured, uh, a muscle, it's like a chronic muscle is already injured. Um, so you, you want to, you want to be for sure, man. That's the last thing I want to do is kind of go out and, and end up hurting it real bad and, and being done for the year. So I've already done that once and I don't want to do it again. So, um, it's something that, that we're just, just kind of a precaution. We knew the all-star break was coming up and that would give us a little bit more time. So, uh, we did it and, um, we'll see you when we get back. You know, you kind of ran through it here a little bit, but it's an interesting roster, the, the Nationals. Uh, this year uh, with guys like yourself have veterans but tell me about two guys tell me about Soto tell me about Schwarber well I think Juan Soto is going to be a Hall of Famer I mean I'll say it right now I think he's going to be an absolute bona fide pure Hall of Famer I think he's one of the most uh, he has one of the most advanced approaches for a 21 22 year old that I've ever seen Um, it's incredible his ability to control the strike zone um, his, his ability to put the, the, the barrel on the ball. Um, you know, he takes his walks. He, if they're not going to pitch to him, he's going to take his walk. And if they make a mistake, he's going to make him pay for it. I think you saw it a little bit there in the home run derby, the amount of power he has. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that the, that was the longest home run I think they've ever hit in the home run derby before. Granted it was in Denver. We get it, but still you got to hit it though. And, um, to be that young, to be, to have that ability, to have that advanced approach that he does. Um, you just don't see it, and that's what I'm so, uh, you know, amazed of of how he can control the strike zone, um, and, and do things, and not expand, and not get you know hit or happy, and things like that. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna go over four nights. Of course, baseball is hard, man. This game's really really hard. It's getting harder every year. Uh, pitchers are throwing harder. It seems like, and their their secondary stuff just gets keeps getting better and better. So, um, but his advanced approach is is so cool to see. Um, the way he controls the batter's box, controls the game, it seems like sometimes um, he can carry us. You know, he can absolutely carry a team for weeks upon time because he's that good of a player. And then Schwarber, I've never seen again. I've never <laughs> seen a guy go on a streak where he's hitting home runs like he did. I think he had 19 or 16 and 19 games or whatever it was, something crazy. It seemed like he was hitting one every single game, and then if he was hit one, he's hit multiple ones too. So <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, yeah. To to go on it, you get hot like that at times as a, as a baseball player. Um, guys know that feeling when you get hot and, and you feel invincible, and you know that whatever pitch they throw, you're going to hit it. Um, but uh, to be able to hit it out and continue to lead off games with homers, just doing crazy things that people's never seen before. It's uh, I was I, like I said I was uh, I was very fortunate just to be able to watch it and it was really cool to see. Soto, uh, if he's not your guy, uh, he, he can be a little irritating to, to watch from the outside in uh, because he is so good and he knows it and the way he goes about it. What kind of a guy is he? You know, uh, between bats in the dugout, what kind of a guy is he? Yeah, he definitely has his antics, but I think his antics are more of a fun antics. His antics are more of the show you up antics because. He's actually a really good guy. He actually has a really good head on his shoulders. He actually plays the game the right way. He plays hard. Um, yeah, he has his his, uh, his quirkiness about him, the things that he does, but I think it's more of for himself, though. I don't think it's more of to show anybody else up. Like you see some guys around the league do, which is I'm more of an old-school guy, you know me. Um, mm-hmm. I, like, I like the game to play the right way and things like that, but – he actually does, though. He does. He plays the game hard. He plays the game the right way. Um, he has his things that he does, but uh, the most important thing that he, he runs down the line hard, you know, he does the things the right way, and um, I think that's going to carry him for a long time. I'm right there with you. I mean, back in your days at Tologa, if somebody hot-dogged around a little bit, they might wear one the next time they got up. I mean, that's just the way it used to be. That's kind of the way it used to be in the big leagues, too. I mean, really, back when I first got called up, I mean, that's kind of the way it was. You showed up the pitcher, you are going to wear one. That's kind of the way it's always been. I mean, that's that's kind of the unwritten rules of baseball. You respect the game, and the game respects you back. So that's kind of the way it's always been. Have you ever told anybody in your old uh, career in the major leagues, I mean, has anybody ever said, you had a pretty good record closing games at Oklahoma State? Uh, it, 
Have they ever brought, seen that part of your resume and said, how would you like to come in here and throw one and see how, see how it works? They have commented on before. I'm not going to lie. A few people have. Um, they, they figured out that I did pitch in college. They figured out that uh, I did have the save record at one time. But they never really said, hey, do you want to pitch in the big <laughs> leagues? They never really said anything about that. And, and thankfully, I'm glad they didn't just because that – um, that was just, just a whole open up a whole nother can of, of you know what and I didn't want to I didn't want to go down that road at all so um, oh, so you could, like I said I enjoyed my time being a being a position player and a pitcher like somebody in the big leagues right now is is the ultimate um, thing as a as an athlete that you can do I feel like I thought it was such a cool thing to do that Oklahoma State and to be able to do what Shohei Otani is doing right now. Mm for the Angels in the big leagues is just incredible. I mean, it's absolutely incredible at the highest level possible to be able to do both of those things and be really good at it. Um, it just It's a testament to what type of player he is. Um, but it's also really cool as an athlete to be able to do both and, and kind of show your peers, like, hey, I can do both of these things and be, be really good at it, you know. With, with both of them, so it's pretty neat to see. When you know you're good, you can feel this way, but he just has a demeanor, either at the bat or on the mound, that, hey, I can get this done. This is no big deal. I'm smooth. <laughs> I'm effective. Uh, now you got to figure a way to beat me. He just has that look for somebody, all right, he's 27, he's not 17, but still, he just he just has a, a demeanor about him, I think, that most managers would love. Yeah, he has that sense of calmness. He has that sense of, I mean, he's smiling when he's giving up a couple of runs. You know, <laughs> he has that sense of, you know, it's going to be okay type attitude. And that goes a long ways. I mean, that goes a long ways when, you, especially in pressure situations, things like that, that the game evolves in. Um, and players feed off that. I mean, your pitcher is up there um, smiling, only giving up two runs or three runs or whatever, going, it's, it's going to be okay. And then he'll, he'll go pop one or whatever in the, in the – in the batter's box, I mean, it's, it's pretty nice to have that sense of confidence uh, going in with your teammates. I asked you before uh, we actually got on the air if you if you run across him at any time, uh, either in the spring training or whatever, uh, especially when you're with Detroit. And I guess the closest you came, he was hurt, right? And so you never saw him. Yeah, 19, he was hurt. He was coming off Tommy John that year. So he, he was starting to hit, I think, a little bit, but he didn't play against us or not that I know of, maybe he hit later on um, in, when we played in Detroit, but he wasn't throwing at the time or, or doing anything like that. So I didn't get the full effect of the, of the show, show, hey, show. So, um, but now I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it almost every night. Highlights, guys are talking about it. It's, it's fun to see. It's good for the game. Lived in uh, Pittsburgh, lived in Detroit, lived a little bit. I, I don't know, it's probably an apartment in New York. Not there long enough to probably get a house, I don't think. Uh, now you're in Washington, D.C. Um, what's that like? <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's a lot of hustle and bustle, as you can imagine. Uh, a lot of people work, work in the city, um, so there's a lot of traffic, a lot of, uh, um, you know, high, high, high area situations where um, guys in suits, girls in suits. I mean, it's constantly just a lot of people walking around. And, uh, but they love their baseball. They love their sport. Um, they, they show up. And uh, I can't wait to get this second half started and see where we can take it. I remember uh, I've only been there a couple of times. But the first time I've been there, uh, we were on a, a basketball trip uh, for the NCAA tournament. And we were going around Washington. And I, I looked at – a couple of guys and there's so many buildings here uh, just in uh, in the white house uh, campus per se and everybody's got to work in those buildings so i mean that tells you how many suits that you're talking about that come and go every day in washington dc no question no question you're constantly uh dodging traffic constantly dodging people uh walking around <laughs> uh just because they got to go to work too just like everybody else does as you and they they are dedicated fans, no doubt about that. Um, how's it feel now to get back and have full participation in the stands? That's got to make you feel pretty good. You know what? I think that's the biggest thing that the players miss the most, and we talked about it a ton um, with the players. Um, you know, over the over the course of last year and starting into this year, because this year we're starting with, I think we started with like twenty five percent, or maybe even less than that, and then we worked our way up to fifty, and then now full. Um, it was just good to have 
people back in the stands, that chatter that you don't hear very often or <laughs> you missed hearing, I guess, that you, did, you didn't hear at all in 2020. Um, you know, that's what, we, that's what we miss the most as players. Um, you miss that, that loudness when something good happens. You know, they get excited or just the chatter in general when um, in between innings you just hear the chatter, like I said, uh, that gives that buzz about the game um, that you just you just don't under, I guess you took it for granted as a player when when people were in the stands and then in 2020 when you actually played and nobody was in the stands um, it was just a completely different situation and I hope that never happens again because it wasn't it wasn't great it really wasn't it wasn't it wasn't baseball it wasn't fun um, it felt like more of a practice situation than anything so we're glad the fans are back we're glad everybody's back to basically full capacity and um, we're having a lot of fun with it. I think the fans are too. The fans are happy to be back because they're showing up everywhere we go. They're showing up and they're they're being loud and, and they're having a lot of fun. Well, the Nats one of those teams that uh, have reached uh, what is it eighty five percent, and then you can not have mask and you can have close contact in the dugout. I think that's Major League Baseball. Is uh, is the Nat are the Nationals in that category? Yeah, we're we're completely. Um, a lot of us are vaccinated, and I think you have to be eighty five percent. So we we, we reach that three threshold. So no more masks for us, uh, no more anything of that. And then I think the stadium is full capacity too. So I think we're all uh, good to go. We're full, full go. And this past, uh, I think this past month or so that we've been full go and it's been, it's been good. It's been good to kind of get the mask away and, and to be normal, to go about some normalcy and just to play baseball again. You know, I got to ask you this too, because, uh, uh, you were a third round pick back in 2008 for the pirates, uh, you know, last year there were five rounds. This year there were 20, which seemed like a lot. But, you know, Oklahoma State being a good example, there probably were four or five guys that get left off a draft uh, list because 21 through 40 weren't there this year. Uh, so there's still some guys that are not going to be – and I don't know how much money. You could still sign a free agency, I, I guess, and go and make it. But uh, you think we'll ever see on a business side, you think we'll see ever go back to those – 35, 36, 37 round drafts. I I don't know. I, that's a, that's the thing is because you're always going to find late late guys, late bloomers that are um, guys that you've never heard of before that eventually make it and become pretty good household names. You know, I think that's what's cool about the draft is mm-hmm. guys that are, are drafted late in the rounds. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if what, what round you're drafted or where you're at. Um, you know, you could be a late bloomer and all of a sudden, boom, you figure it out, and that's that's all it takes. You figure it out. And you play well, and, and you, you, your your whole career takes off. So that's what's cool about you know at least having 20 rounds this year, having more players drafted, kids get a chance to go fulfill their dream, and at least give it a, you give it a shot. I think that's the biggest thing. You give it a shot, you give it a chance, and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But yet you still have that chance to go out and play and and uh, see what happens. And and that's why I like more rounds, you know, more picks, more things like that. It gives. It also gives you know organizations more depth. I think organizations need depth. I mean, I think guys are getting hurt left and right, as everybody's seeing now, and not just in the big leagues, but also in the minor leagues too as well. Guys are getting hurt, and that gives a chance for other guys to step in right away and, and play. And who knows, maybe they could their their career jumps off. So um, having more people or more guys drafted and more rounds, I think it's good for the game. You're not a doctor. Any answer for all those injuries? I don't. I, I don't. I think it has to do with, you know, taking the time off. We start remember, remember in 2020, we, we, we were cranked up in spring. We're almost, almost through spring training, and then we took two months off, two and a half months off, almost three months off, and then started back up again and had a 60-game season. Um, playing 162 is a lot of games in the big leagues. It's a lot of games. And so you really got to pace yourself and, and uh, you know, Try to try to avoid the injury bug as best as possible. Somebody else trying to get in on the interview. That's good. Uh, tell, <laughs> tell <laughs> that's what, my boys. What's the family? How, how's that going now? Uh, we're good. We we've been swimming this last few days. We've been enjoying this weather. We've had some really good weather, so we've been enjoying the weather and uh, just swimming and having a good time. So when you got you got to leave? Go back uh, tomorrow? Is that when you? Uh-oh. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go out tomorrow. Uh, fly back out tomorrow to D.C., and, and uh, we play uh, Friday, open up Friday. Well, as I said before, I'm, I'm glad for your sake you're only six games back and there's still an opportunity to get into the playoffs, but I'm not glad that you're six games back <laughs> because you're chasing my beloved Mets. 
And I, I would be remiss if I didn't have you at least go out on this note. What's it like to face Jason, Jacob DeGrom? You know what? I think he's the best pitcher in baseball. I don't, I don't think there's any question about that. I think um, he's figured something out where um, he's just getting better and better as he goes. Um, you, I mean, you're talking about a guy that's throwing 99 to 100 every single pitch and locating. You know, when you talk about guys that are throwing that hard, usually the location is kind of the last thing that you even worry about. They're just kind of throw it down the middle and here, hit it. He can locate. He, he's also throwing a slider at 92 to 94. I mean, he's throwing a changeup, 88 to 91. I mean, just numbers that are jumping off the charts that you've never even seen before as a player. It's almost like when you create a player in a video game and you're maxing out his, all of his abilities, and that's what you're getting. You're getting a guy like him. It's just, it's, it's not fun, first of all, facing him. It's not, I've faced him once. I've, I've actually faced him a ton in, in my career early on with Pittsburgh because we played, we played the Mets quite a bit. And then I faced him once this year. And obviously, I had no chance to hit him. He struck me out three pitches, I think. But um, just the, the things that he's doing, the ability – of uh, to repeat the the starts, repeat the pitches that he's doing, um, it's just incredible. And uh, guys, guys talk about that we don't want to face him, obviously. Um, <laughs> and if you do, you're only going to get one shot or two shots at him, maybe to do something. And if you don't, that's that's that, that's all you're going to get. So um, the the things that he's doing, like I said, are pretty storybook numbers. I mean, I think right now he's. He could go down as one of the greatest you know, seasons in the history of baseball is what he's doing right now. So we'll see. We'll have to wait and see. But um, the the things that he's doing, like I said, getting better every year as he's getting older, which is crazy. Um, and it's just uh, it's crazy to see how good he how good he really is. Yeah, there's something wrong with that. That ERA has crept up just over one now, and people are wondering what's happening. You know, what what, what is he losing it here, or is he tired, or what's the deal? He, he was I just that, think he gave up. He gave up one or two runs. That's it. That was about <laughs> it. That was it. And and the video game you're talking about, I can figure a way to score more runs in the video game than the Mets actually score for him that's, when he's that, on the that's mound. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so so the video game might be different. Hey, Jordan, always good to catch up with you, man. Uh, you're always a good. Uh, a, a good look and a good uh, insight into the all-star break, which we catch you every year and best of luck to you. I want you to have the best of luck. I don't know if I want Schwarber and those other guys to have best of luck, but Hey, I, I can live with it. If you win it, if, if the Mets can't win it, I'll, I'll live with it. If you do, well, we'll make that deal. All right. So, sounds good. Thanks TD. I appreciate you having me. All right, buddy. Keep in, uh, we'll keep in touch. I appreciate you being with us. All right. Sounds good. See you, bud. Bye. That's Jordy Mercer.